How's it guys? Welcome to part two of my uh, battery and solar setup. If you didn't watch the first one, then that is just up here. Uh, so I felt I didn't go into too much detail with the first video. It's more like a basic overview of uh, sort of the, the battery that I have in here, as well as the solar panel that was then ratchet strapped to the top of my vehicle. Um, so now I've managed to put my fridge into the back of the vehicle so that you guys can get a better idea of sort of what's going on, how it plugs in, all the functionality behind it. Um, I've also managed to install my solar panel to the top of to the top of the canopy over here, uh, which is amazing. So that makes things a lot more versatile, a lot more you know easier to use. Um, so yeah, let's get straight into it. Okay, so as you can see. This is a, a very basic setup at the moment. Um, I, you know, I'm not camping right at the moment, um, so this is quite empty. Normally, this would be quite quite packed up. Um, I am wanting to maybe put this uh, this freezer onto a fridge slide, and maybe also bring in um, some better sort of storage solutions, maybe like a drawer system. But that's obviously, you know a lot further down the line um, at the moment this works perfectly for me uh, i don't do you know intense intense camping um this trip has been sort of the most intense that that we've done uh, it was supposed to be a two month long trip through uh, namibia and botswana so unfortunately we only managed to travel for the first three weeks um, in namibia until until the whole covid 19 story started um, but yeah, so I, I mean, I think it works perfectly well. It's obviously a bit more of a mess in terms of finding things. You know, you kind of have to unpack and go through ammo boxes and all those kind of things. Um, but as I start to do this more and more, you know, I'll find a better way of of uh, storing things, better solutions, and then I'll sort of work around that. Um, but so at the moment, the most basic that I have, uh, which is... Uh, pretty much permanently sort of in the back here is the battery box um, so this battery box I got from uh, 4x4 Mega World down in, in Cape Town and Pardon Island uh, it's working amazing so far no issues uh, it's got all the ports and plugs that I require uh, so it's got a little voltmeter at the top here along with two USB ports and a uh, cigarette lighter as well so this is where I always used to plug my fridge into, was through the cigarette plug. I have now changed that, um, so I'll show you guys that. And then over on this side, we've got the two uh, the Brad Harrison plugs, um, which this solar controller plugs into the one. Um, so this is, I think, a 20 amp solar controller. Um, so, so a charge controller so that basically um, has the solar panel that plugs in here and then the battery that plugs in here and then I've got a spare uh, Brad House plug this side so I decided to change the fridge's plug to rather fit in here because it's a lot better um, a lot more secure it's not gonna pop out as easily whereas the cigarette plug could potentially you know pop out or give give problems um, so I'll show you guys sort of a bit closer up here now Okay, so as you can see, that's a very simple setup. Um, has everything that I need. Um, and so inside the battery box is a 105 amp hour battery uh, that I got from 4x4 Direct. Um, and I mean, that works perfectly fine for me. The fridge that I have, it's a 60 liter Snowmaster. And they say it takes or draws around two and a half to five amps. Um, you know depending on its uh, settings um, so and with the with the solar panel also charging the battery I haven't had any issues um, what you could do as well before going out on a trip and you're setting the freezer to minus 15 
plug it in at home first, get it down to that temperature, then come plug it in. Then your battery doesn't have to work so hard to, you know, get it down to that freezing temperature. Um, and so basically the solar panel that's on top of the canopy here, uh, those cables just plug in, feed through to the solar regulator uh, so I can constantly see what's happening here as well as on top of the, uh, with the voltmeter as well. Um, and as I mentioned before as well, the Snowmaster comes with the ordinary uh, cigarette plug. So I changed that to the Brad Harris. Um, and that's simply just because it gives a, a lot stronger connection. Um, so that then feeds into this empty slot over here, kicks in. And as you can hear there, the, the fridge comes on as well. Um, and I mean, this is a very steady connection, very strong connection. That's not gonna go anywhere on corrugations or whatever rough, rough terrain might be uh, encountering. But so let's have a quick little look at the, the mounting that I've managed to do with the solar panel on top of the canopy. Okay, so as you guys saw now, it's a very simple setup, very easy setup. It's essentially just two uh, U-channels that sit on either side that runs all the way across, uh, mounted to the existing um, rails on the canopy. I did make a bit of a, uh, a rookie error when I, when I did do this the first time. Um, so I took all my measurements for the length of the U-channels at the back of the canopy. Uh, simply just because that was the easiest that's you know the easiest place to reach closest place to reach um, but because of the the shape of the bucky of the canopy it's got a bit of a, a V towards the back um, so the distance between the two rails at the front and the distance at the back is quite a major difference um, so I had to yeah I had to <laughs> remeasure and drill a couple of times um, but you know it's part of the fun even even just the distance uh, difference between this front bracket and the back bracket was I, I think about an inch difference uh, in where I had to drill so yeah just don't make that mistake just make sure that if you know you're mounting your solar panel or whatever it is that you're mounting at the front of the canopy um, you know even between the, the front and the back points just make sure that you measure those correctly just so that you don't have to uh, you know drill the entire day <laughs> Um, but yeah, it works works very well. So it's basically just uh, some M10 bolts uh, at the bottom, which the U channel attaches to, and then the solar panel lays on top of the the top part of the of the U channel with some M10 uh, bolts a little bit further in, and it's yeah, it's it's very it's sturdy. Um, I've taken it on a on a few corrugations now, and I haven't had any issues. Um, so yeah, I hope that this video is a little bit more informative uh, compared to the first compared to the first video, um, and it's working well so far. I hope that you know it continues to do so, and yeah, obviously I'm going to add a lot more things to this vehicle, uh, you know, over time as I camp more, explore more, and kind of see what works, what doesn't work. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that there's going to be a lot of transformation as well. Um, at the moment, I'm just going to enjoy the views here. I found this little dry river bed uh, not, not far from where I live so that's very nice um, and yeah so hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers!